Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I want to take a look at Clojure Core Async. So let's get to it. I'm cool. yeah. So I've got this blank project here. I'm just going to add all our dependencies. So the first thing I want to do is create a depths.eden file. And then I'm going to put in a blank map. Then actually I'm going to put in the key of pause and I'm going to put in the source directory. And then let's add a depths field and let's get our depths. So the first dependency I want to get is obviously core.async. So let's just grab that here. I'm going to put everything in the description down below. So let's grab core.async. For this example, I'm going to use a library called Hato, which is a HTTP client. And we also need data.json, which will allow us to convert a JSON string into a closure map. Once we have that, what's wrong? Oh, let's put this here. Once we have that, we can create our core.clj file inside of a source directory. Save that and let's start our REPL. Cool, then the first thing we want to do once our REPL is started is require core.async. So to do that, we just go require closure.core.async. And I'm just going to use refer to grab some specific functions. And the first three functions I want to grab, well, the first function I want to grab is chan. And let's evaluate this and then let's see what Chan does. Cool, Chan returns us a channel. So I suppose this is a good time to say what quarter async actually does. Quarter async allows you to create channels, put values on that channel using one thread. You can put multiple values on one channel and then we pull values out of that channel in another thread. Let's use a channel. So I'm gonna create a let binding here and I'm gonna assign that channel to C. And then what I want to do is add values to that channel. So I'm going to start a thread using future here. And then I'm going to use do seek and loop over the range of, let's say, one to five. So let's just see what do seek does. So let's print line uh, X and I'll show you. So I'm just going to grab this here. And do seek doesn't do anything because it's do seek, not the seek. So let's just change that. Evaluate this. And then you can see um, it loops through this vector. So this creates a, this range creates a vector. Let's do that here. Of, well, a list actually of one, two, four. And then we're printing one to four out here. So instead of printing this value, let's push it onto our channel. So the way we do that is by using this function, which takes in our channel and then the value. So the greater than sign says we're pushing values onto the channel. The first exclamation mark says this is giving us a side effect and the second exclamation mark says this is thread blocking. So once we've done that, well, we actually also need to refer to this function and let's also refer to the function to pull values out of channel and that's this one. So it's the same as the put, but here it shows that we're taking with the less than sign. Evaluate this. And now we can see that, cool, we're just putting values onto a channel, nothing is happening. Let's use those values. So I'm just gonna copy this future. Instead of pushing on, we're taking off the channel, so we don't need the value. And we can actually just print line and see what we get um, from Chan. Cool, and then we see we're getting from the channel, we're getting one, two, three, four. Awesome, let's clear this. One thing to note is that when we start these threads, we probably don't want to use future, but rather use the thread function that's provided to us by quarter async. This function, instead of returning a promise, let's just evaluate this, returns us actually a channel. So you can see it returns a channel back. So that's just better when you're working in quarter async land. Cool, so the next thing I want to talk about is buffers. What buffers do is it allows you to put a certain amount of values onto the channel before taking them out. So right now, if we, let's comment out this form. If we evaluate this, nothing gets put onto the channel. Well, we actually don't know that. Let's say print line, putting value. Well, let's say putting value. Let's build everything right putting value X on channel. So if we evaluate this, we're not putting any values on the channel, but if we create a buffer of size, make it of size five, we can see that we're putting all the values onto the channel before they're even being read. 
if we made this of size two, we'd only put two values on the channel and we'd have to read, no, actually, let's show you that. If we read two values, so it's read those two values, then we should put another one on afterwards. Clear this, evaluate it. So we're putting a value on, oh, it's a bit hard to see here. Let's actually, let's, I'm just gonna put a thread.sleep here when we start this thread so we can see that happening. Thread sleep of one second. So we're putting on two values, then we're getting the value and then we put on more values. That's channel buffers. Next, I just wanna look at the put and take functions and these allow us to use callbacks. So if we go put and take, now what we can do is use callbacks with our channel. So if we create a channel here, then let's inside of a thread, we can put the value onto our channel. We'll say on the code again. Then this takes a callback function here, so fn, and this will tell us if the value has been sent. So we can say sent, then we can just print line here, has been sent, and that will be our sent value. Save that, let's actually just format this a bit. Then we can create another thread and take that value out. So just go take from our channel, and then we can pass your callback here of our value, and then we can print line, take in, equal to our value. Cool, then before we evaluate this, let's just import everything and then we can evaluate this. Cool, so you can see that on the code again is taken and then for some reason this doesn't get printed in our output, but it does get printed here in our terminal. Has been sent is true. The last thing I wanna look at is using Go routines, and this is a lighter way to create threads. Creating threads is quite expensive, but creating these Go routines is a bit cheaper. Well, it's actually quite a lot cheaper um, because it doesn't create system threads. So I'm just gonna evaluate this, added the Go function, and then what we can do is we can actually copy this here, and I'm gonna take out the buffer size, and I'm gonna replace these threads with a Go routine. And to do that, all I do is use go and go and then what you want to do is to prevent blocking you use this function so you use the with a single exclamation mark so let's include those here and then if we run this we still have to just import these functions then we can run this and then we can see it worked. Let's get rid of the sleep. We'll actually clear this and then evaluate this. Cool, and we can see that it works the same. Well, it seemingly works the same. If you, I don't know, making a thousand threads, maybe you should think about using a Go routine. So now I wanna show a bit of a practical example of using a quarter async. What I wanna do is emulate getting a user's email from an API and then sending them an email. So what we would do is in one call, get the user from the API, and then when we fetch the user, then send them an email. I wanna create a function for getting a user here. So get user, and then this will take a user ID. And I'm gonna use this recres API, which is just like a dummy API to get a single user. So he has the API address. And I'm also gonna use the Hato client Hato client, I don't know, to make the request. And while we here, I also want to include closure data.json, which will allow us to convert a JSON string into a closure map. Closure.data.json. Let's evaluate this. Then we can get our user. Let's actually call this fetch user. And here, I'm going to first get the JSON payload from the API. So I'm going to use string and then the API URL, then the user ID. Then I'm going to call hc get on that string. We actually don't need these brackets. And let's just see what this gives us. So I'm going to fetch user one. There it goes. We can see that the user is in the body key. So I want to fetch the body 
out of this response. Evaluate this and then let's see what we get. Cool, we have the user, that's JSON, and I wanna convert that JSON to a map. So to do that, we can use the JSON read JSON function. Evaluate this and now we should get that back as a map. So then I just wanna grab the data key out of this map. So let's grab the data key. Kill this. Cool, and we finally have a user. Let's get rid of that. Now I wanna create a function which emulates emailing a user. So I'm just gonna create a function called email user, and that takes in an email address, and then this is gonna just sleep for like two seconds. And then we'll just say print line, email sent to, and then the email. So let's evaluate this. And what we could do here is we could say email user test at test.com. Evaluate this, sleeps for a bit, and then we get an email sent. Cool. So let's use these functions in core.async. So to do that, I'm just gonna make a function here called process users. And then here what we'll do is we'll create a thread and we'll do a do seek x, we'll do range one to five. Then we'll fetch our user x and we'll pop this user onto our channel. Put this channel inside of a let binding. So we can go let channel is equal to chan. And let's email those users in another thread. So we can actually just copy this. Then email, here what we'll do is, we'll actually get rid of this and we will take a user off of a channel and then we wanna grab their ID, I mean their email address. And here we can email user. Cool, and we actually don't need to do this here with the do seek, so copying was a bit silly. What we can do is we can go, we can loop here, and then we can say when sum, and we can grab the user off of our channel. And here, let's grab this, paste it here. We can put our user here. Let me just get rid of this do seek. Save this, and this should work. And if we run process users, we should be emailing some users. Cool, and then we're starting to send emails to users. Users are being pushed onto the channel and emails are being sent. I'm just not sure why it's only doing it once. Cool, I only did it once because we actually need to put a recur. We need to end our loop with a recur. So let's recur here. Save this and then we can run this again. Well, evaluate this function and then run it again. And now it should recur over that. So sent email sent to George, email sent to Janet. There we go, we're emailing our users. So I also wanna show writing this with Go routines. So let's copy this function and I'm just gonna call this process users go. And here what we'll do is instead of using thread, we'll use go and here instead of using thread we'll use go and here we can use put parking and here we can use take parking and this should work we evaluate this and I'm actually just going to make this a bit faster here I'm going to just sleep for one second let's evaluate process users go cool and it's still working but we can actually simplify this because this is quite a common pattern, we don't need this other loop here. We can actually say go loop and import this function at the top. So I'm import it here at the start. And here we can get rid of that extra bracket and this should also just work. So let's see. Oh, I just have to move this here inside of this when sum, then reevaluate this and now it should work. Cool, and now that works. Cool, lastly I wanna show that we can also close channels. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create this channel 
outside of the select block. So I'm gonna make define a channel here. So we'll say users channel. And it's just gonna be a chan. I'm gonna define that. And here I'm actually gonna close. Well, I'm not gonna close the channel yet, but I'm gonna show us that we can close the channel. So we just say close and we pass through the channel. And I'm just gonna import this close function at the top here. Evaluate this. Cool. And instead of using this let channel, I'm gonna use our users channel. And now if we evaluate this function, we can run this process users go and it will start processing users. But if I close the channel, oh, it's be okay. Well, let's, <laughs> it's because the email users is slow. So I'm going to take this email user out of here and I'm going to add it to the fetch user. And I'm going to increase the time here, evaluate this, reevaluate the email user function, then go here. And now if we just reevaluate our users channel, then we can process, well, clear this up. Process users go. So we'll start emailing users soon. And if I close the channel, we should stop because the channel's not closed and we can't put values onto it anymore. And that's it for starting quarter async. I hope this helps. There's lots more to cover on this topic and I really want to. So subscribe if you want more of this kind of stuff. Cheers guys. Bye. Just one thing I forgot to mention before I end off this video, I want to send a big shout out to my fans in Brazil and I hope you guys love closure as much as I love your waxes. So peace.